sorry. Hi and welcome to Mark's Motivational Podcast from another Authors Tuesday. Today I'm delighted to be joined by another great author, and Nicola Carroll from London. So um, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast today, Nicola. Thanks a lot for joining me. Okay, hi. <laughs> How are you? Great, great. Yeah, uh, sorry about the trials and tribulations tonight with the Zoom. We had a, had a few a few problems we got there. But... <laughs> yeah, but we're yeah. all right now. We're cooking yeah. the gas, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, if you want to just uh, start by telling the listeners a little bit about yourself and uh, about the book you've, you've written, you've published it yourself. So yeah. let's look forward to hearing about that. No problem. Let's, should we talk about the book first and then yeah. we can talk about uh, my background? Yeah. Is that okay? Perfect, Nicola. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right yeah. So it's just a, it's a book about about I I had the idea quite a while back, and um, it's a book about a kid who thinks he's a superhero, um, and he just helps people in his community, and he's yeah. found his superhero outfit in the laundrette's uh lost property box where his mum works. So it's a bit of a mishmash of things put together, yeah. and um, yeah, and they just go around in the community and help people. I think this is the first book. I've got another one coming out um, where they just help an elderly man in the community. So doing their laundry or whatever, whatever people need. And he's one of them kids that just sort of, I don't know, you've probably seen him running around the playground, screaming for no reason, just letting off steam. He's a bit like that. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it was quite good fun. I enjoyed uh, writing it, it's, you know my story and um i illustrated it and uh designed the front cover and, and you know done it all myself so yeah that that's the book so about myself is um i might keep you here for a while <laughs> yeah i'm a qualified qualified school teacher so qualified about 20 years ago probably a bit longer so I was doing that for about 20 years. In the last 10 years of my career, I was teaching children with special educational needs. Quite, yeah. um, and I was doing um, home tuition, alternative provisions. I worked in um, a hospital school. Um, I did lots of different things. So, you know, got to meet some great kids. Mm. And, you know, but after 20 years, I thought, well, I need, I need a change. So... I retrained as a driving instructor and I've been doing that for the past three years, which I quite enjoy because it's sort of similar to sort of home tuition. I'm out and about, you know, I'm not stuck in the classroom. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Great. And I'd say you probably got a lot of your stories from working with children in the schools, did you? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you've got some characters. I mean, even now yeah. I sit and think, I wonder what happened to that kid. He was great, you know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. funny. And, yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah, I did. I did. You know, like I said, the children, I mean, that's what you do it for, isn't it? You do it yeah. for yeah. for the yeah. children. So, but, um, yeah, I needed to change after about 20 plus years sort of thing. So, yeah, I thought I'd come out and... and uh, be a driving instructor but still again I'm still meeting interesting people that's why I do it yeah. we have great conversations I tell them all about the book and mm. you know what I'm doing and, and things like that and yeah it's good fun that's what it's all about isn't it meeting people definitely definitely well, that's great do you have a picture of the book do you have you got one of the books with you this, for people watching on YouTube and uh, now this is a video on on um, Spotify as well go. oh great great stuff yeah, so yeah. I've illustrated it all myself. I've done wow, all this drawing and sorted it all out. And uh, it's got a few illustrations in there as well. Great stuff, yeah. Brilliant, well done. And yeah, have you always been a writer yourself, um, Nicola? Have you ever, have you always written? Um, I started off, really, I was um, into art. So I did a degree in art in Bradford. Mm -hmm. So I was doing painting and printmaking there. And mm. sort of a little bit of illustration and textiles. It's sort of um, a course where you could explore all different sort mm. of avenues, really. So, yeah, I started off drawing and it wasn't until later on. I always knew that I wanted to write a book. I just didn't have the idea. And then one day 
like I said, when I was teaching, I was working with children. So it just came to me, oh, yeah, well, I've got this character now. What am I going to do with him? Well, he wants to help people. He wants to be a superhero. But, I mean, before that, I had taught um, all, like some English, although I qualified in art. Mm. I had taught some English. I've been head of English. And some of my sort of projects that we did were based on making your own superhero and comic strips and things like that. So, you know, it's sort of all linked in in the end. So yeah, that was that was good. So yeah, I, I used to do like abstract art, printmaking and you know, still life and things like that. But yeah, I didn't really start off as a writer. But as life goes on, if you've got a story to tell, mm. you know, you yeah. don't just stick to one thing, do you? You try all different things. So. Well, that's great advice. And you're get, you're going to utilize all your skills which are which are art making the, the cover and then writing the stories as well. So that that's great. That's good. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah brilliant. <laughs> Great stuff. And um, yeah, um, uh, where can people get your book, Nicola? Where can people? Um... um, they can find it on Amazon. Like I said, it's self-published on Amazon, um, and on Barnes and Noble, so they can get it there as well. But I mean, they can f- still follow me on social media. So I've got a group on Facebook, The Laundrette Kid. And I'm on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. So I try to keep up with them regularly. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I love the I love the title the laundry rack here. That's great. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's found his costume in the lost property box. So <laughs> it's a mishmash of everything. <laughs> Stuff that people have left behind, you know. Yeah. He don't right. care. And he's dead, he's a superhero. And I think as well, you know. There's a superhero in everyone, really. We all have our 15 minutes of fame, don't we? Yeah, yeah. So, you know. And do you ever go into schools and do readings for them? Did you ever, you ever do that, Nicola? Not yet. I've been talking to the local library where I live here in London today, actually. I spoke to someone and they're looking at my book. So hopefully I'll be able to get on um, some sort of festivals and stuff like that that they've got going on. Mm. But I am... Uh, working with the New Am Writers Workshop. So okay. it's a group of writers that get together once a week and we share some ideas and we get feedback from each other. And they do bring out a book once a year. So they've invited me to um, publish a piece in their book that's coming out. Cool. And um, and yeah, that and that's not about the laundrette kid. That's more a bit more grown up. Mm-hmm. So that's about um, my imaginary meeting with Paul McCartney, what I would say to him. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said back. It's very short, but it's comical, you know. It's it's Quite fun. Cool. Yeah. It's just good fun, yeah. yeah. Them writers groups are great, aren't they? Like um like the way I don't know if you work out prompts to you, is that that's the way you do it like um the one uh, I think we just prompts. bring our own stuff. We just bring our own stuff. But I mean, since I've written that piece, there's been a couple of writers there that said, Oh, your work has inspired me to think about when I met that's someone great. like in in real life. Mm-hmm. that it was my idol and they wrote about that or someone would write about someone else that they met so that's you know that's a job done for me isn't it if I could in- inspire other people give them ideas definitely to yeah. write about yeah. something that's good because some of them said to me I've not written for a whole year mm-hmm. and then they've come back and said you inspired me to write something and I'm that's like oh great, great. you know that's brilliant yeah brilliant Box ticked, really yeah brilliant so, that's great yeah <laughs> And I've only just started. I'm not, I wouldn't say, you know, mm. I mean, we all use the same words, don't we? You know, it's just yeah. the way you put them together. It's just that we've all got different stories to tell. That's all. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's the most important thing that I find is, um, you know, it's your story. It doesn't matter whether it's the greatest novel in the world or the greatest book or whether you're the greatest writer. It's about your individual story, isn't it? It's the original Definitely. story. And that's what people sort of like look for they look for different different stories from different people that's the most mm. interesting thing yeah that's the best thing about when you're a writer like to catch it to express what what your story is so that that's that's a great point yeah great yeah yeah, yeah. and how long did it take you to write the book yourself Nicola did it take you long um uh I sort of pretty much had it done mm. quite a few years back about four four or five years ago 
and I've got the second one done. I've had that done for a while, but it just took me. Life gets in the way, doesn't yeah. it? Like I, yeah. said, I was yeah. training to do something else for a career, and um, I just kept putting it off. And then I was thinking, you know, should I put illustrations in or shouldn't I? And then I thought, no, I will put a couple of illustrations in mm. just to make it a little bit more interesting. And, um, you know, so it took me quite a while to navigate my way through the self-publishing yeah, yeah. Sort of thing. And, um, yeah, so then I managed, I thought, right, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm just going to get it over and done with. And I've done it, published it in December. So, yeah, I mean, it just, it just took a while for me to get it together. I kept saying I was going to do it, but I mean, yeah. actually, I've actually written it, but actually mm. getting it together and bringing all them elements together and getting through the the whole system that you have to go through on Amazon is a little bit, that's another job altogether. We know what <laughs> <laughs> about it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but once you do it once, yeah. it's like you get, get kind of used to it, Dan, don't you, like for, for your next one? Yeah, yeah, I'm all yeah. sort of prepared now. I've got it all set up and um, I, I know how to handle it now. So, yeah, it's a learning curve. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, it's congratulations. Great. It's great to actually have the physical book that you've written, isn't it? To have in your hands yeah. as well. That's a great feeling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that is it is a good feeling. I've done it. You know, yeah, something yeah, exactly. that, you know, you yeah. can't take it away from me. Mm, exactly. So. No, brilliant. And can I just ask as well, um, do you kind of have a system or a strategy you use when you're write like, you know, when you were writing the books, um, like write a certain amount of words a day, or what way did you do it yourself, Nicola? Yeah, I did. Uh, I do have a system. So, like the first book, obviously, that's a, a lot of introduction for who the main character is and the background and the setting. So, there's only like two. Usually, you have a few problems, don't you? It's like any book, you have a few problems to solve the bigger problem at the end. Yeah. My books are very short. So, I usually just stick to two or three problems. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's always going to be two or three issues that he's got to solve in the book. But like I said, uh, the the first book is a lot of introduction of him. So my formula is, well, I've got this character now, we've got the setting, but I'd always have two or three problems based around the same theme for him to sort of sort of solve or, you know, mm. conquer in each book. So the next one's going to be about recycling. And it's to do with a different family at the moment. In the first book, he's just dealing with um, one man that comes into the laundry and needs some laundry done and stuff. And then the next one, it'll be like a bigger family with children and it just carry on. And then the next one, maybe about pet setting and how he deals with the different animals and things like that. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, I do have yeah, a, like a formula that I stick mm. to, two or three problems. That's it. And I but yeah, like they're quite descriptive as well. I like sort of writing very descriptively, mm. sort of trying to paint a picture with words, but obviously I've got a few illustrations in there at the same time. Yeah, so you're giving a kind of a um a sort of message for families and children that are reading it. Is that yeah? Well, I, th I think yeah, it's a bit of um not an inspiration, but I think children are, all, are always encouraged in school to use more descriptive writing. Yeah, yeah. And especially when they get to their GCSE, then they're in one of the English language papers, it's like a picture, write a piece on this. Mm -hmm. And you've got to use very descriptive sort of language, although a lot more clever than you would at sort of primary school level. But I mean, if you could get children, in, instead of saying like, for instance, like the blue sky, you know what I mean? Or, yeah, you know, the yeah. blue sunny sky, you know, using more words to describe one sort of element, it's, it's going to be better for them Definitely, going yeah. forward. But yeah. I mean, not just for your GCSEs. I mean, in life, it's very good, good for your soul, really, to get mm. things out and be creative, whether it's through art, music, mm -hmm. um, writing, you know, whatever you want to do, poetry. You know, it's, 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 you know, you've got to get people to express themselves. To get, that's what keeps life interesting, isn't it? That's what I enjoy, like I said, about meeting people, hearing their stories and things mm -hmm. like that. That's that's really what sort of inspires me. I mean, we could talk about other people's books. I mean, I've written a few here. I always like to go back and read the book, you know, The Help. 
Yeah, I like yeah. to read that book. I've read that a few times. I like Adriana Trigiani, but most of all, it's people's stories. Mm -hmm. Like since I've written the book, there's like members of my family saying, "I want to write a book. Will you help me write a book? I've Brilliant. got a story, you know, right. like things yeah. like that." I listen. And I think, yeah, yeah, I'll do. It. When I get time, I'll come, <laughs> come and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's in, it's, you know what makes the world go round, isn't it? Yeah, that's a great point. Great point, Nicola. Thanks very much. And can I just ask as well, what age group is the book for? Uh, for people who are um, I've sort of aimed it between the ages of seven and eleven. Okay. Like a mid age group. Great. But that's I mean, great. saying that, I mean, you could get children that are older that the reading levels are a bit, a bit lower than yeah expected, and they could be. I mean, anyone really could read it. You know, mm -hmm. it's quite enjoyable. Yeah. Great. For sort yeah. of all ages. Brilliant, yeah. I, look, I love that. Comical. Not to put like an actual age limit on it because it's good for any anybody to read any kind of book, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's mm. fun. Yeah. yeah, great stuff. Yeah, and I know that's great. And the other thing I was going to ask you as well, uh, you know, when you were writing, when you ever write a book, or you probably did answer this already, but if you've ever kind of hit a metaphorical wall, like you know, when you when you're a block, like a writer's block, has that ever happened to you? And uh, how would you Not really, because my head's full of ideas. I've got a bunch of yeah. ideas in there, and the the, yeah. the only problem with me is getting them out onto paper because then yeah. I was and and the endings are the worst. I'm not very good at endings. I'm not very good at ending a conversation. You know, I could let it go on for ages. It would come to an end, and then I'll start it up again. And yeah. do you see what I'm saying? So endings are very quite difficult for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'll get halfway through or nearly to the end of like a piece of work, and then I'll start going back to the beginning and editing before I've even ended it, and think, no, oh, I could do that better. I could do this. So getting to the end, that's don't really have a problem with um coming up with ideas. My my brain's full of ideas. That's great, yeah, <laughs> <Don't>... brilliant, <laughs> great stuff, yeah. I'm your brother. I I understand you there, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, I suppose. Um, what what kind of is your was your favorite books to read and kind of favorite authors as well? Um, yourself, Nicola. Um. Uh, so, like I said, Adriana Tregiani. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't have a specific favorite of. I just finished reading, um, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That was good. So anything uh, sci-fi-ish, I quite like that. Um, the one before that was a book uh, written by a member of the Nuram Writers Workshop, Jeff Jones, and he wrote his true story. Um, it's called uh, Wind, Wind Rush to Whopping, and it's about his life growing up in the East End and how he's turned his life around and stuff like that, and his family coming over there was from the Wind Rush rush generation and mm. how he encountered like racism and prejudice and uh, we sort of got through that and managed to get a good education and a good job working with children and yeah so yeah I wouldn't say I've got a specific author that yeah. I always oh, go well, to yeah, yeah but I do yeah. like I like um I like Adriana Trigiani because she wrote um a couple of books about um I think what was he called Big Stone Gap, so it's sort of like really American. I'm quite interested in like American history, and I think that comes from when I was at um, college studying art. I sort of found pop art, and I sort of liked the way that that went. That was sort of like a big boom after the war, and you know the old idea of the American dream, how people could go there. It was like the land of the free, and get their own land and stuff like that. Although you know looking back on reflection now i know that's not not the case how it was really you know mm. they sort of um people that went there you know there was they sort of stole the land from mm -hmm. uh the native american people so, right, yeah. Yeah. but i mean the whole idea of pop art that it was sort of easily created it was a reflection of what was going on in in the media and stuff like that so uh, you know i do get sort of in fact, my dissertation was on the Spaghetti Western. How I got away with it, I do not know. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, <laughs> I wrote it. But I was quite interested in like the costumes, the good mm. and bad. I yeah. suppose it was almost like a superhero when you look at it, a superhero film, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Like you always get the good guys and the bad guys in a yeah. western and things like that. So, yeah. and I looked at um, obviously Clint Eastwood, man oh, we've course. known. Yeah. Brilliant. You know yeah. how his costume reflected that, but yeah, I really don't know how I got away with writing that dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I enjoyed it, you know. Yeah, it's good. Exactly. You've got that's a great um great description of the books you've read there. Like I must um get you to send them to me like um especially the one you're you're talking about earlier on about um about the the racism thing like you know that's yeah that, when yeah. yeah I'll send you yeah. the link yeah, yeah he's that sounds really good, done yeah. a really good job I mean it's, mm. it's a hefty book you know yeah. there's a lot of ins and outs to it but it's a true story yeah. and he's like nice he's like a nice guy he's made it through you know mm. done something with himself which is I mean when I went to school in the 80s, I grew up during the 80s. I mean, I think there was only three people from my year group that went to college. I mean, it was unheard of. Like ourselves, yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, yeah. you know, to get get somewhere and do something for, yeah. for, um, yeah, from this sort of background in the East End of London, it's, yeah. you know, you've, you've done something with yourself. That's it. Great stuff. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. yourself, but I find like reading a good book is nearly better than watching a film. Like you know, because you're better off watching reading the book first because <laughs> the the, the yeah. film, or watching the film first, I should say, and then reading the book. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, do you find that? I don't know because I did sit and watch the movie The Help as well the other day, and I've read the book several times and I've watched the movie several times. But I mean, I wouldn't say it was my most favorite, but I do favorite film but I do like it I mean my fav- most favorite film is probably The English Patient because oh, that good, sort yeah. of goes skips yeah. from one sort of scene to the other mm-hmm. it tells a story within a story yeah. um, that's that's quite in- interesting I haven't I mean, seen that film in of, years just, actually yeah pardon? sorry I haven't seen that film in years I much, must watch yeah. that again yeah it's quite good yeah but if you want a good cry that's the film to go to yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I, I did. Yeah, it's like got a couple of few different storylines in it. Mm. Um, it's really sad, but I mean, I've just finished watching as well The Last of Us. Okay, I've been wa- watching that about this sort of like the apocalyptic thing, but again, that that whole series they've got different stories in each episode, and some mm. of them are like really sort of human stories, you know, they're about love and you yeah. know. So yeah, that I mean yeah, I like that. I, I like the Walking Dead. Watch mm-hmm. that several times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bit of sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you mentioned earlier on as well. Paul McCartney was your favorite kind of singer. <laughs> Is that right? Um, I, I wouldn't say he was my favorite, but out of all the four of them, the question that I wanted to ask him, I thought he was the most sort of viable one. Mm-hmm. Really, my favourites were Ringo. I mean, I'm not really a big Beatles fan, to be honest. I do like all different music. I like a lot of jazz. Mm-hmm. So, Billy Holiday, Chet Baker, Little Jimmy Scott, Quite Nina cool. Simone, I like all them. But I do, I like the Beatles. They've done some good, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't deny that they, they're um, a good day or something. Yeah. But um, yeah. I thought to ask him the question that I wanted to ask him, um, you know, uh, you, well, I think you've just got to, well, when the book comes out, you'll read it because I don't want to spoil it. It's such a short piece as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah of probably course, yeah. be the best person to ask to be, to be honest. Yeah. But obviously, it was just an imaginary meeting. I've never really met Paul McCartney. Yeah. But in my head, like, you can imagine anything, can't you? True, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Right. Uh, was your, have you ever been to see the, uh, much concerts? With, um, have you ever seen it? Uh, was uh, over the last while have you seen any good concerts? Um, I did go to see Christina Aguilera. Oh, very good. And yeah. um, I'm interested to go and see the Dixie Chicks. Okay. Do you know yeah. the Dixie Chicks? Yeah. Oh yeah, I've heard it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 again, I like a bit of country music as well. I've got into mm. that over the past few years because it tells a story. Mm-hmm. But when you yeah. listen to, um, some of Dolly Parton, it tells a story. 
yeah about something that's gone on in their life almost like jazz almost like the blues and you know i think yeah it, i mean it all really does doesn't it when you listen to music it always tells it but i just find yeah the country does yeah sort of tell a story a little bit more yeah, I love a song like that. Like, especially being a writer like yourself, I love love to hear a nice, nice story in a song. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, so, what's next for yourself? Um, what what's next on the agenda? You, you have another. So, book? um, hopefully, I'll get. I think I've been trying to use social media to get to the public more and get them to see my book but I think I'm going to start um getting more in contact with people in my local community like the libraries maybe mm. schools yeah and things yeah. like that to sort of um you know maybe do some readings and, and things and get onto it and then obviously get onto the second book which is about recycling Quite and cool. um yeah but now I'm, hopefully in the future once I get these this series of books done I may get up to about six books <clears throat> I might try and write um, like a sci-fi western road Brilliant. trip yeah. sort of book, like for teenagers, because I've already got that going. Again, like I said, I've got loads of ideas written down, like handwritten ideas and stuff like that. But it's just getting them all together and getting the time to get them together. I know, yeah. So, um, yeah. No, so, yeah, back I, to look at it. yeah, we'll carry on from there, I think. Once yeah. I get all my ideas out of my head, I'll be okay. Once I, I help my family write their books. <laughs> <as well>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's next in the agenda as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got to do my arm, my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but I mean, I've got 36 first cousins, so I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll have to send me the links to the books as well um so i can share them on the show notes as well for people to, yeah. to buy them yeah i will do yeah no problem of course yeah. i will yeah. and can I just ask you as well do you ever um just something i've asked people on the podcast over the last while something that i've started doing listen to music not with lyrics but um with kind of just uh even classical music while you're writing do you ever try that do you, do you, do you something you ever do um... I mostly, like I said, just listen to jazz, whatever takes my fancy. Sometimes I listen to ABBA. Sometimes I listen to like dance music. And yeah, yeah. What whatever comes up, but um, some a lot of the time when I'm writing, I don't listen to any music because I just want to fully concentrate and make sure I get it right. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't get it a hundred percent perfect. No one ever does. No, no. So, but I just try my best to focus on that. Mm -hmm. and stuff but obviously it does give you ideas when you listen to music you could write down notes and stuff like that it can can be quite inspirational kind of like i said mm. all mccartney thing that is inspired by one thing that i did see but i didn't sit and listen to it when i was actually writing it okay so yeah, i don't, I don't yeah. find it helps me concentrate but other people are different you know whatever yeah, yeah. whatever works for you isn't it yeah yeah it's like myself like i only started doing a while and just kind of getting the flow today when you listen to music I found like you yeah. got a kind of a flowish state, you know. So it's yeah, um, like, like you say, it's not it's trance. not for everybody. <laughs> it's not it's not for. Everybody. I think like 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 I said, you get it out. It can inspire you to mm. write it, anything. But yeah. actually, for me personally, to actually sit and write something is quite difficult. I don't want any distractions, so I tend not to listen to music when I'm when I'm actually writing, sitting on the computer, or whether I'm doing writing in a book. Yeah. like this it could distract you yeah yeah i do yeah. listen to music when i'm doing the illustrations though okay yeah great <laughs> stuff yeah that's yeah. different yeah no <laughs> yeah. hats off to you there. that's really good like you're um have you done it for anybody else the illustration is that something you're thinking about doing for um other i've not or? done anything for anyone else no i've okay. done a few demonstrations on the on tiktok mm, um but i think i did one one or two videos on a demonstration now i put my illustrations together Right. Um, but I've not illustrated for anybody else. Mm. Um, yeah, not yet anywhere. You know, someone's yeah. interested. You know, oh, you know yeah. more than willing to help. Mm. So that's Very another good. thing that I could look into. Definitely. One yeah. one thing that I was also going to do in the back of my book, there is like a, a short list of questions mm -hmm. about how to sort of um, get children into writing. What sort of questions you could ask children about their own superheroes. 
Great. And uh, what I would like to do is produce a workbook to go with my the Laundrette Kids series so that, you know, uh, kids can use it in school and, you know, mm. can help them get, get writing, illustrating and doing their own ideas. That's great, Nicola. That's a great idea. Yeah, brilliant idea for, for, for children. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely pick up a copy of it myself for my own kids. So I've got a good good <laughs> mixture here for that. <laughs> um, so uh, they'd be all interested in that. Get them reading for a, set, for a while, get them off the, the screens, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, the reviews that I've had back, I mean, there's a couple of friends whose children have picked it up and read it and they said, yeah, they really like it. They're waiting for the second one. So... Brilliant. You know, yeah. the pressure's on for me. I've got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, did you ever look at going down the, the publishing route, like the or before you? you, you yeah, well, I, I did actually get an offer from okay. a, a company, mm. um, but I turned it down because what happens when you're a new author, mm. they don't want you to illustrate it. They you know, they know that you've got a good idea in writing. Mm -hmm. They want you to use their illustrators because obviously they want to sell the book under their name yeah. and they've got an idea of how they would like it. So they did want a lot of a bit of investment up front. So I said, well, no, I can't. couldn't really afford it Probably at the not. time anyway. So, you know, it's quite expensive because I think they wanted to do like quite a far a job on it. Mm -hmm. So I turned that down and I thought, well, you know, it's good that they've accepted it. And I thought it was a good idea, but mm -hmm. I'm going to go on my own because obviously I've got a degree in art anyway so I may brilliant, as well choose yeah. a great full use yeah yeah so well so. done with that's brilliant yeah great but you never know it could become a tv series in the future yeah that's could great yeah. <laughs> yeah hopefully that'd be we could have too. merchandise and everything you don't know yeah. do you definitely yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> one day <laughs> La laundry what's it La what's the name of the again laundrette La kid La laundrette Landry laundry kid airlines or something we could be there huh <laughs> well um yeah like yeah lunch boxes and <laughs> yeah, great, great t-shirts yeah, and yeah stuff. why not yeah definitely fun. Yeah, yeah. great stuff yeah and is any of your have you went for the bookshops yet have you have you approached the bookshops i've only approached one but the thing is when you publish on amazon you can't really sell it in a bookshop okay. because yeah because they're not going to make any profit on it so bookshops won't stock it, but libraries will stock it. Yeah, I have my book in so, the library. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's certain things that you can't can't do because yeah, obviously yeah. you still you're selling it through Amazon, aren't you? But sure. and Barnes and Noble, but yeah. So you can't really go for actual bookshops, mm -hmm. but yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, hopefully, well, yeah, we do we do all right this year. Yeah, Let's great stuff. Yeah, so look, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. It's been great talking to you, and I wish you all the success going forward with your whatever you do with your books, and um, and hopefully to see you on the on the TV sometime. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you yeah, very great. much. Thanks so, for having me. No, great. Thank you. So that was Nicola Carroll, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining me today on uh, Mark's Motivational Podcast. There's one more thing before you go. Sorry, if you could kind of give advice to other writers, um, because it's a motivational podcast. What, yep. what what would you just say to them? What, what what kind of advice would you give uh, the listeners? I'd say if you've got a got a good idea, don't listen. I mean, there's always going to be people when you're in the world telling you you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're never going to make it. Just do it. Just do it. You only live once. If you think you've got a good enough idea and you enjoy doing it, do it. That's brilliant. <laughs> Great, great, great way to finish off. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> great. Thank okay. You. So thanks again, Nicola, and thanks everyone for listening. We'll catch you real soon. Take care. Best of luck. Take care. Bye. Bye.